Hey everybody, Tyrant Rex here once again. Today I'm going to bring you a new part of the series. It's going to be called, Why Would You Buy It? Today I'm going to start with Dark Souls 2, new release coming out in March 2014 for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 from From Software. From From Software. <laughs> Funny name for a publisher and developer. So, basically, Dark Souls 2, why would you buy it? What are the reasons that you would want to pick up this game, play it? couple of easy reasons. Number one, you've already played the previous two games, Demon Souls and Dark Souls, and you've enjoyed them. That's already a reason to buy Dark Souls 2. Reason number two, it will be a challenging game. You will come away playing the game with a sense of accomplishment and achievement. Something that is missing from today's games, sadly. Have you ever run through a game in less than six hours and it just felt like you wasted 60 bucks on that game? This game will not be like that. You will take at least 30 hours on your first playthrough, maybe more for the trial and error that you're going to have. Number three, it looks cool. It's got a great, a great new graphics. Like what they did is create a new engine, and using the current console generation, the Xbox 360 and PS3, they have improved upon what they previously did. In this in this new game, they're going to have flowing things like cloaks, grass, when the wind blows. You're going to have bright lighting dynamics. You have to use torches in this game to light up dark areas. Or you can cast spells down, and the light casts itself on the walls and casts shadows appropriately. So, it'll, it'll just look very good. That's number two reason. Number three reason... It's for this generation. Why is this a good reason to buy this game? Well, if you're looking at the E3 press conferences, if you're looking at the way that the next generation of games are going to settle out, it's it's good if you can just stick with the current console and not have to buy a new one, right? So, the fact that it's being released for Xbox 360 and the PS3 is a great reason for, for you to want to buy this game. Because it doesn't force you to buy a new system to play the new game. I think this was a good move on From Software's part to develop it for this generation. Even though it will be really late in the cycle for this generation, it's going to offer people with a little bit less money, a little bit, uh, a little bit less money to spend on new games, a chance to not have to spend so much just to get a new game. These are three great reasons why you would buy Dark Souls 2. Reason number four, the enemies. The enemies are going to be tough. They're going to be hard. They're going to kick the crap out of you repeatedly. If this is something that you enjoy, if you enjoy overcoming challenging things, these enemies will give you the challenge that you want. If you don't like a challenge, you won't want to buy this game. But, who am I talking to? I'm talking to Dark Souls fans now. Dark Souls fans love a challenge. They have since Demon Souls. If Dark Souls was their first game, they found that it, they found that it was tough. It was you had to do a rigorous daily activity, and you had to pay attention, attention to detail. If you miss a single detail, don't have a timing on your roll right, you're dead. If you don't, if you go through too hastily, walk through too fast, you're gonna get ambushed. You're dead. This kind of gameplay is intuitive. It's tough, and it forces you to learn. If you don't learn, you won't finish the game. So, why would you? Why would anybody want that? Well, let's look. Let's look. Look at some enemies in Dark Souls 2. Even the regular zombies walking around can deck you pretty hard. If you miss a swing or miss a parry, you're gonna get hit, and it's gonna do a lot of health damage. Number two, the little troll out on the sword in the Dragon's Mansion thing. You can, parry, you can parry him throwing attacks. That is a really cool new feature to parry throwing attacks. If you miss, that second axe is going to whack you in the head. And you're going to be wiped out. The Mirror Knight. This will be the first time in a Dark Souls game, in a Souls game since Demon Souls, in which extra enemies will be thrown on the board. It. The Mirror Knight has this ability where he drops out his shield, and a new warrior busts in. 
It's going to be like the Four Kings. Everybody's been saying it's like the Four Kings. Four Kings are actually four different enemies. They have the same move set, same things. It's just for the same guy. The Mirror Knight. The Mirror Knight will create several different warriors. They may be the same warrior. They may be different warriors. I'm not quite sure. But hopefully it would be a human player. Hopefully it's like the old monk scenario. Where when he drops down his shield... If you're wearing a certain ring, or if you're wearing a certain piece of gear, you may have a chance to get summoned to fight in the Mirror Knight fight. That would be a pretty cool thing to do. So hopefully they do that for, for that fight in the final product of the game. What else can I think of for enemies? The Salamanders, constant fire. You're going to get lit on fire a lot. And it's going to look so good with their new lighting engine that it's just going to be fun to watch just just dying. Dark Souls, ma the, the maps, they look beautiful. They did some great artwork. They have some great concept art. We got lots of new enemies, lots of new places to explore, new mechanics, a new character, and a new quest. Now, what are some reasons to not buy this game? Why would you not be interested in this game? I've got a few. One, you're a five-year-old. You have no clue what motor skills are. Two, you just aren't into fantasy games or knights games. Three, you're a wuss and you don't like a challenge. If you don't like a challenge, don't pick this game up. You will get frustrated. You will waste your money. Four, you ain't got the 60 bucks to spend. But, since you can still trade and use games for this console generation, go ahead and trade one in. If you really want this game, if you really want to try this out, you can go buy Dark Souls, the first one, for 20 bucks new. 20 bucks or less now. I bought it like a couple months ago for 20 bucks. I played over like 200 hours on it. That game is fun. It is challenging, and it's fun to find new ways to beat it on low levels, high levels, with friends, without friends, solo, with phantoms, with magic, melee, ranged. It's just fun. You can t do so much in one playthrough or in multiple playthroughs, create different types of characters, build any way you want, and it adds a variety to the game that keeps it from getting boring. That's another reason to throw on there why you would want to buy it. Another reason you want to buy it is the story. Now, everybody was freaking out when they said that they were making the story a little more accessible. This is not a problem. Accessibility to the story does not create an issue with the enjoyment of the story. Yes, in Dark Souls, you had to go out of your way to figure out what was going on. And even then, it was kind of ambiguous what was going on. That is where your imagination is supposed to take over, which is what the director of Dark Souls wanted you to do. He had a little bit of trouble understanding the whole fable and myth of Western legends. And he wanted to create a game around that kind of lack of knowledge. It really emphasizes the myth and legend thing, where you can't tell what's true, what's not, what's been embellished, what is just a, a lie. You got Kath and Frampt both telling you two different stories about the same story. It's two sides to the same coin. And you have to figure out which one is telling the truth. Well, I'm not going to spoil the end of Dark Souls, but it's still very, very difficult to figure out what actually happened and who was actually telling the truth. Maybe they both aren't telling the truth. Maybe they both are. Who knows? That's the kind of thing that Dark Souls' original story was like. You had to go out of your way to read all the things on your armor, on your rings, your weapons... You had to ask NPCs, talk to all the NPCs, finish storylines with the NPCs, and figure it out. If you couldn't figure it out, you just play through again and try to figure it out the next go through. Another reason. If you think Dark Souls is not going to be a multiplayer platform, you're wrong. Dark Souls has one of the most intuitive PvP systems out of all the games out today. 
games like Call of Duty, which is designed around the multiplayer these days, have seemed to be falling short in recent times. They don't offer any new. They don't offer anything new in the way of, of multiplayer. You still got the same guns with the same hands holding them, and you just change up the same maps with just a slight bit and give them a little bit of a paint over. How's that fun? Dark Souls, you got the same maps you're playing on, you got different si kinds of arena, and it looks like they even developed the maps so you could have arenas to fight in in PvP. So, okay, you're playing in the same arena all the time in Dark Souls. How's that any different from Call of Duty? Everybody that you come into contact with in Dark Souls has the ability to be different than the person you previously fought. They can have a completely different build, a different weapon set, armor set, different spells. Some people will prefer to Tranquil Walk of Peace and then Wrath of God. Other people will prefer the Pyromancies, Fire Whips, Fireballs. Some people will prefer the Soul Magic, Soul Spears, Soul Arrows, all that stuff. PvP is going to be a very rich experience in Dark Souls 2. Especially from the way it looks, what they did with the magic and the melee system. They're now improving the two-handed system, making it a much more viable option. They're going to improve the magic system. They even had some spells in which the, the soul magic gave you a little bit of an extra length, gave you a little bit of a melee ability as a mage. They had a little soul sword thing that swiped out in front. They've got fire magics, they've got lightning magics. There's lots of ways to play the game, and it keeps the game nice and fresh, nice and fun, and people just like that, it, especially Dark Souls fans. We don't like it. Most people don't like being confined to one playstyle. Other people like to be led by the hand and fed cookies every two feet. If you like to be fed cookies every two feet along the way, don't pick up this game. You're probably not going to like it. But if you like to work really hard and get a stack of cookies at the end, pick up this game. This is Tyrant Rex, just signing out. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'll be back with more. These are just going to be little short videos with some reasons why you should buy it or why you would not buy it. I hope you enjoy that kind of concept because I'm going to be doing it a lot more. I'm going to be looking into the new games coming out for the next generation, this generation, and I'll be providing several reasons why you should or should not buy them. You have a nice day. Signing out.